Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a deployment share using the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. We're going to do this virtually on a Windows 7 virtual machine running inside of VMware Player. We also have a 2008 Enterprise server that has our Windows 7 source files. So we are going to create a deployment share of Windows 7 professional using the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. The first thing we're going to do is launch the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. So I'm going to click on Start, All Programs, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, and then the Deployment Workbench. The Deployment Workbench takes a little time to open, and that's okay. It's a pretty awesome tool. When the Deployment Workbench opens, you'll see you've got an Information Center and Deployment Shares. We need to right click on Deployment Shares and left click on New Deployment Share. I'm going to leave the path as default and create my Deployment Share on C colon slash Deployment Share. If this were a real Deployment Toolkit in a production environment, I'm most likely going to want my operating system images on a drive letter other than C, but for demonstration reasons today, we're going to leave the share path on the C drive as deployment share. The share name is deployment share dollar sign, which means it's a hidden share, so users will not be able to browse the network and locate this share. It's hidden. We're going to leave that default and click next. The descriptive name defaults to the MDT deployment share. For demonstration reasons, that is fine. In the real world, I may want to add a better description here which more accurately describes what it is I'm deploying. For now I'm going to leave it as default and click Next. The Allow Image Capture page comes up which essentially is asking me if we should capture the images of domain join machines and this is actually not recommended so we are going to leave the check mark ask if an image should be captured so we have the choice as an administrator if we want to capture images of machines that are in a work group that join the domain and we'll click next we then have the allow admin password screen that comes up and during deployments users can be prompted to input an admin password or not that depends on the culture of your IT department for now, we're going to ask our user to set the local administrator password, but I can tell you in the real world, I probably want to control the admin passwords. And then we'll click Next. And then we have the Allow Product Key page comes up. And here, we can choose to prompt the user for a product key for Windows or not. And once again, this depends on the IT culture in which you're working. Uh, so I'm not going to ask a user for a product key. As an IT administrator, I will manage the product keys, and I'm going to click on Next. Then we get a summary page, so all of the necessary details have been specified. We can review the values below. So we're going to install our deployment share at C colon slash deployment share. The share name is deployment share dollar sign. It's a hidden share. The description is the MDT deployment share. We will allow image capture true, but remember that's on our choice. We will prompt for the admin password, and we will not allow the end user to input a product key. So then we'll click on Next. So the process has completed successfully, so we'll go ahead and finish the installation. We now go back to the deployment workbench, and we have deployment shares. If I click on Deployment Shares, I now have my MDT Deployment Share. And if I click on my MDT Deployment Share, we'll give it a minute, it's going to populate with some folders. Great. So the next thing we need to do to finish setting up our Deployment Share is to add the Operating Systems folder. So we want to select the Operating Systems folder right click it and choose import operating system so in the import operating system wizard we can choose to put a full set of source files into our distribution share which I'm going to do with the Windows 7 professional 64-bit source files 
or I can add a custom image file that I've maybe captured using image X or I could use a Windows deployment services image. For now I'm going to use a full set of source files so I'll click on next. Now we have to input the source. We need to identify where the source files are located. So I've got my 2008 enterprise server which is called RWDC01 and I've got a share called downloads. And from here I know that I've got Windows 7 Pro x64 as source files. I also have Win 7 Pro x86 which is 32-bit. I'd like the 64-bit version so I will select that and then click on next. I now have a destination directory name. This is the name that you will see within your deployment toolkit and Windows 7 x64 is descriptive enough for me so I'm gonna leave that default and then click on next. I now have a summary page which indicates that I'm putting Windows 7 x64 in which is 64-bit. The source is currently located at slash slash rwdc01 slash downloads slash win7pro underscore x64 and I am going to go ahead and click on next. So I get a progress page and this is going to take a little time because we're copying the source files from the enterprise server to my Windows 7 deployment toolkit. So I will get back to you when the copy is complete. Great, we now have operating systems that have been populated in the operating systems folder. We have Windows 7 Home Basic, Windows 7 Home Premium, Windows 7 Professional, and Windows 7 Ultimate. Remember there is one distribution media for Windows 7 and depending upon the license key that you enter will be a direct output of the operating system that you have installed on your computer. Great, this concludes the demonstration of creating a distribution share using the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010. We created a share that will deploy the Windows 7 operating system. So thanks for watching. This is BrickHouseLabs.com and I hope that you come back and watch additional videos. Thank you.